What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Slow Six Fix. So today we're going to be diagnosing a airbag light warning on the Cobra. So Project Apex Snake, you haven't seen much about this in a little while. Um, just been driving it really, but um, we're gonna see why my airbag light is on. All right, so what you're gonna notice is you turn key on, you should get all your engine lights, right? And the airbag light will turn off. So that means, um, you know, your, your car recognizes that the airbag is there. Started and running. Um, nothing yet, but what I found is that the airbag light will seemingly come on and flash. I think if I turn the wheel some, there we go. Now it pops on, right? So you see it flashing there. What you can actually do is count the amount of flashes and that will give you the code. So I think that was 12. It flashes three times at once. 15. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Four, twenty-seven. Thirty. And then it's gonna stay on. Sorry, my camera keeps trying to focus on the steering wheel. So you'll notice it stays on now. So that's indicative that your airbag um, system, something is not working correctly. Now, the other things you may want to test um, to see if it's your clock spring is, does your horn work? Mine does. The other thing you can check is the cruise control. So what you can do is you can look up how many flashes that is and see um, what that correlates to. Or what I'm going to do, I have four scan on my computer. I'm going to plug that into the Cobra and see what we get. What need for Forescan is an OBD2 dongle that plugs into your laptop and a laptop. And then the software is free. Um, and I've used this in a couple other videos, so we'll take a look. All right, so we have the car on and we have the um, Forescan plugged in. So what you're going to find is it's going to read you any DTC code. So we have one here. Let's check out what this is. IC and the RCM. So we have two codes, C1284 and B1932. So let's take a look. Oil pressure switch. Uh, the car's not running, so I'm not worried about that. And then here's the one we are worried about. So airbag circuit open loop one front driver's side module restraint control module. So that tells me that the, the driver's side airbag is the one that's not reading and it says airbag driver side circuit open so what we can actually do is we can go to live diagnostics and we can turn this on so let's set this to the RCM table read the driver's side airbag I'm just gonna pick a few of these Hit okay and then we're gonna see what we got here so we have one continuous code and five ohms on the driver's airbag this so that at least gets us a 
a way to start on where to look as far as diagnosing this. So it's definitely the driver's side. All right, so we have the owner's manual or the shop manual for the Cobra. Um, this is a website called charm.li. I'll put the link in the comments for the video. Um, but basically it has shop manuals on here. So DTC B1932 driver airbag circuit resistance. So this is basically how to check the system and try and diagnose everything. So step one is do you have a continuous DTC? Yes. Move to H2. Part two is check the airbag itself. Now, this requires a $150-ish um, diagnostic tool that I don't have nor am I gonna buy. Um, so we're gonna assume that the airbag works correctly and we're gonna try and check step H3. So, um, check the air, driver airbag module circuit. Um, so this is going to be checking the RCM, which is kind of down by the shifter, like underneath the radio. Um, you're going to want to check the resistance with the key off. So I'm going to disconnect the battery because we really don't want to set off the airbag um, to do this. And then part four is to check the clock spring and you're looking for resistance greater than 0 0.5 ohms. If yes, you need a cl new clock spring. Um, same thing with the last one here. If yes, um, go to H4. So the RCM, you want a resistance greater than 0.5 ohms, and the clock spring, you do not. So we're going to follow these directions and see what we can find. In case y'all are curious why I haven't started this project sooner, you can see my thermometer on the clock in here says it's 101. Welcome to life in South Carolina. Um, I think it's like 94 outside, so it's kind of miserable in the garage right now. All right, so the restraint control module is actually underneath the dash. So here's like towards the center console. You kind of pull this carpet back a little bit. And right where I'm pointing at, that connector that's gonna be your restraint control module. So this is what we're gonna be checking next. All right, so we have disconnected the RCM module harness, and that's the next step in checking this. So a bunch of wires back here. According to the diagnostics, you're gonna to wanna to check the resistance between the gray and orange, and the gray and white wires, which are seemingly right next to each other in this pinout. You wanna stick your multimeter figure out which pins those are, set your multimeter to resistance, and see what we get. So I'm going to do that here in a second. All right, so generally your multimeter ends are not going to fit in one of these plugs. So I'm a fan of using paper clips as long as they're not coated in anything. Um, the two wires are going to correspond to um, these two right between this gap right here. So then you're just gonna set your multimeter and kind of touch it to these paper clips and you should get a resistance reading. All right, so you're looking for a resistance greater than 0 0.5. I seem to have that. It's kind of hard to read with the paper clips. So we're gonna to move to the next step, which is checking the clock spring. So this is where you're gonna to need to remove the airbag. Okay, so in terms of removing the airbag, there's a little plastic piece right here. I'm not sure if I can get it off with my fingernail. Anyways, there's a little plastic piece right here that you're gonna pop off. And there is a uh, nut or bolt behind there. There's one on each side, so you're just gonna remove those two. And there's your bolt. I think that's a, either an eight or a 10 millimeter. Um, so you're just gonna remove that and the airbag just kind of pops off. Okay, so once you remove those two bolts, you're just gonna carefully pull off your airbag here. And there's just one connector on the back side that you're gonna disconnect. So you just disconnect this yellow wire connector and you can just set your airbag out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna be testing the resistance on this 
wire here. There's only two wires, so it's kind of impossible to mess up. If you notice, this is going to be the same colored wires, gray with orange stripe and gray with white stripe that we're testing from the RCM. So this is going to test your clock spring. Um, and then we're looking for the same thing. We're looking for the resistance on this wire. All right, so these actually do fit in here for me. Bad news is seemingly need to replace the clock spring on this car. Um, so we got 28.8 on resistance and it is supposed to be less than 0.5, I believe. All right, going back to my instructions here. So we just measured the resistance at that connector greater than 0.5 ohms. Yep, definitely is install new clock spring. Kind of what I figured. Just kind of sucks because it's a pain to get to. All right, so removing the steering wheel, you're going to need a T50 Torx bit. So you're going to unclip your cruise control here. And this is um, the connector for the clock spring. You're going to need to remove this big center bolt, which, like I said, that's a T50 bit. All right, so the next step is we're going to have to remove the steering wheel. I bought this puller on Amazon. It's a Lyle. There you go. There's a part number. Um, so hopefully that should help me get the steering wheel off. All right, so bad news. Don't buy that steering wheel puller I just showed you. This is the little piece that you need. It's supposed to fit right in here. Bad problem is it's too big. It kind of encompasses the whole hole. So you're not going to be able to use it to pull the steering wheel off because it's sits the whole way around on this outer edge so that's not gonna work all right good news I was actually able to get this off just by kind of shimmying it so you really don't need the tool um, I lowered it so that my knees I could put underneath and then I was able to actually kind of rock the steering wheel back and forth 10 and 2 you know probably like 7 and 1 um, and I was actually able to pull that off so Pro tip. All right, so at this point, we have officially gotten to the clock spring. However, it doesn't just come right out. What you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to take all of this paneling off um, around the steering wheel to be able to get, disconnect the harness to be able to get this the clock spring off. All right, so the next step, there's going to be four screws underneath this plastic panel here, 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 and here. You're going to need to unscrew those so you can take this plastic piece off. All right, so then there's actually a fourth screw way back in here. So if you're going to be able to get that out, you're actually going to have to take off this panel. There's two screws on either side. You're going to have to remove that to be able to get to the final screw for the plastic so we can get to the clock spring. All right, so you pull that plastic piece off, and then you're actually going to need to remove this metal chunk too. So there's two bolts on each side. I think there's only two. Um, I'm going to screw those. And take this piece down too. All right, once you get to that metal piece off, it is only those two bolts. This is the last screw for the plastic piece that you're not gonna be able to reach unless you take that off. All right, so now that you have that piece off, right here in yellow, it's gonna be the connector for your clock spring. So you're gonna need to get the clock spring off. There's clips on it, one's right here. We're gonna need to take off this top piece. So, what you're going to notice, we have to remove the lock cylinder. Um, so, right next to the screen connector, there's this little hole right here. You're going to need the key. You're going to need to turn the key into the run position, maybe. Okay, we're in run position there. What that's going to do is turn that little hole and then there's a little button you can stick a flathead or a punch in there you're gonna push that up and then you can actually remove sorry you can actually remove the whole lock cylinder by just pulling that out set that somewhere safely and then this panel will just come off now 
So you gotta push that little tab here. There you go, there's the little button you gotta push. And in a moment of opportunity, this um, gauge pod that goes around the steering column um, is actually black doesn't really match the interior, so I'm gonna give that a quick rattle can while I have it off. All right, so I just pulled that piece off, and now you can get to the other tab. So there's one up here somewhere. You just gotta kinda feel around for them. You're just gonna untab those, pull off this clock spring. You're also gonna need to disconnect this yellow connector underneath. It's gonna run kinda back into the dash back here. All right, in terms of the clock spring, there's gonna be two connectors if you follow this yellow wire back there's gonna be this brown one there's gonna be this gray one we're gonna need to disconnect both of those and this is where you're gonna have to take that center panel off anyways to be able to get to these all right so then the final thing you're gonna have to do is remove that screw right there um otherwise you're not gonna be able to get the cord for the clock spring out like the wiring all right so got a new clock spring from Late model resto, shout out to them because they sent stickers. Um, but yeah, this is what we're gonna need to replace in the car. It took me, it took about four days to show up. So we're gonna try and install it. It is a Ford. Oh my god, there we go. Ford OEM part. There's the part number if you need it. Um, so these are apparently still made. All right, there it is. The old clock spring is out. So then the install is going to be the reverse of that. You're going to run that wire through. You're going to connect everything. You're going to put that little piece back on on the ignition cylinder. All that fun stuff. assembled. Um, I'm going to reconnect the battery, hopefully not get hit by the airbag, and see if everything works. All right, friends. Ignore the seatbelt chime, but I fired the car up. And no airbag warning. Everything seems to work. Horn. So, that seems to be good. <laughs> 